In the Gambit vs Na'Vi matchup on train, it felt like Na'Vi were fairly one-dimensional, but in one round they were actually able to get into the B-bomb site with a lot of players pushing through Appa with a set of grenades behind it after playing a default round. Here we can see the overhead view on the map, where Na'Vi play out a single default round with Electronic towards side, perfected towards main, and then later on in the round they gather towards B for this burst towards Appa. We're going to actually showcase how Gambit were able to adapt and overcome this attack from Na'Vi around following this. But first, let's see how this round actually did play out in the sense that Na'Vi were able to win and force a save out of Gambit. I've included POVs of both the players who were killed on B, so you can see why they died. So one round after winning that round towards B, Na'Vi decide, let's basically do the exact same thing again, just with one smoke towards Sandwich and one towards E-Box, with Electronic doing his usual towards Side. So this round is ultimately not successful for Na'Vi, and it's kind of clear why, because Gambit they knew that Na'Vi did not have much success towards the outside part of the map, and they knew we can actually double stack towards B pretty early on, and if not double stack, maybe triple. So we'll see on the radar here, Electronic's already done his fake towards side, and now he's actually walking away, but in process of that, we see Nafni moving across and Inters will soon move across as well. Even though Na'Vi get quite far across into the bomb site, they ultimately get into a situation where there's too many angles to consider, and they ultimately get taken down and are forced to go outside where Axile is lying in wait. He gets two kills and ends the round right there. So here's the POV from the side of Na'Vi, where you see the players going towards Upper, and ultimately you'll see exactly how far along Upper they get, where <laughs> if you're not dropping down onto the bomb site, you're basically giving a chance to be shot from you know, five, six, seven different angles. It's even worse when you're not getting any kills when you're up there as well. So the first player POV we're going to go over is actually Shiro. So you could argue the hero of the series overall, winning many clutches of course, but his impact in this round is actually more a case of like, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, he gets quite lucky in surviving. Like, he overpeaks a bit too much, peaks and misses shots he probably shouldn't miss usually. But as soon as he identifies what's going on, he throws a great Molotov, which you can see over here. As well as that, he actually goes for another peak, which I thought was a bit audacious. But ultimately, he knows, okay, well, if I jump up, I probably get killed. I'll just hold for the drop-off and cover Hobbit. So even though he gets no kills in this play, he actually makes the correct play. And that's what matters. He does fail the jump up to actually trade the kill in simple, but we'll actually see now from Axel's point of view as well, where he makes the round winning play to actually end it. This did get a bit dicey at times, but I don't think it matters too much. So we're going to jump into the POV of Enters right here. So he's actually the player tasked with holding off Electronic's IV presence. So from the get-go, Electronic throws the Molotov to stop any aggression. Inters responds by Molotov, or smoking on top of the Molotov. And we'll play this in a bit fast forward because not much happens, but we need to see how he actually reacts to this. So the smoke comes in towards the end, and he actually rotates around to cover the backtrack, because then Axile has the front side. And as the smoke's about to dissipate, he throws a Molotov down, flashes, peaks, sees nothing there, and he gets the call to rotate towards B. He pushes, well actually he, he waits for a second on the sea smoke, but as it's fading, he gets a chance to see two players towards upper, and they're basically free kills. Like there's no fight back from the Navi side. The next player we're gonna go through is actually Nafani. So he is again, he's similar situation to Inters. He actually gets into Pop Dog of throwing a Molly and then he just sits there for ages. He then puts a smoke and walks off. He's one of the earlier rotators. And he gets into B as the X side comes in, at least towards the back track side. Unfortunately for Na'Vi though, he actually gets ahead of the smokes and understands there is nothing coming through lower, and is able to take an interesting battle. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this in a second, so let's see, we'll get a third person perspective. So he's actually positioned himself where he cannot be seen from upper, 
and he can instead kill the players pushing lower. So this is actually a really, really good play from Nafani in the sense that he can isolate 1v1s rather than giving too many avenues. So he gets this first 1v1 in Boomage, and by the time he needs to be Kappa again, Inters has come around and saved him. You could argue he overpeaks going towards Simple there, but it really doesn't matter too much. The final player we'll show is actually Hobbit. So he was the B player that actually got killed on top of White Train earlier on in this round, or earlier in the previous round rather. So his role, again, the same as Shiro, where just by repositioning, he makes it enough of a play where it's the correct play and his team ultimately get the round win. Like that, that is what matters when we think of Counter Strike, right? You want to win for your team. You don't have to individually perform well every single time. And Hobbit, he does exactly what is needed of him. He stays towards the coil. Any player dropping, he'll take care of them. Any player pushing through lower his side, he'll get rid of them. And fortunately for him, he doesn't need to do it.